The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 544. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She has led global communications to Yahoo during its most turbulent times and built PR functions from the ground up at a startup, but decided to forfeit this life to do something more purpose-driven. And I'm just really excited to have her on today to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Anne Espiritu. And how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Yeah, thank you so much, you know, for having me. I know that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I think what you're doing is is terrific, particularly for women during this very formidable period of our of our society. Yeah, so just by background, I just as you said, I led global communications for Yahoo under Marissa Meyer shortly before we had um, sold the company to Verizon, and most recently I was in New York working for an Os- uh, for Oscar Health, which is a pretty large startup in health care where I built the function from the ground up. And last October, I decided to take a leap of faith and and now on, on to my next journey. Thanks for sharing that. And Anne, what's your cultural background? So I was born in the Philippines. I am of uh, Filipino and Chinese descent, moved to the U.S. when I was 11 uh, and have been living there since. I did have a short stint where I moved back to the Philippines for a few years, really wanted to immerse myself in, you know, in, in my culture of origin. And now I'm actually living in Bali. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Gosh, I have so many. So I I will tell you that one of my life principles is from Gandhi, which is be the change that you want to see in the world. You know, as I sort of think about what my next steps are, which is, you know, to take all of what I've learned in communications and being an organizational leader and become a leadership and culture management coach and advisor, I sort of think about, you know, what do I need to do from here on forward? And, you know, one thing that I've been very focused on is doing some inner work. I think oftentimes we get focused on being human doings as opposed to being a human being. And I think, you know, the the work has got to start from the inside. And from there, you know, we can start to see some transformations happen in our external world. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I would say that self-confidence is anchored on the belief we have about ourselves. You know, I think oftentimes we, you know, focus a lot in trying to find validation from accolades and recognitions, you know, from from career, from other people and the way that they feel about us. And I think that's great. And I think you know, those things are just a natural part of living. But if you really want to find self-confidence that's sustainable and that's really anchored on your your inner truth, we really have to start changing the way that we believe about ourselves. Because if we cannot, if we can't recognize that language for ourselves, there is no amount of, you know, of, of validation from other people or from, from recognitions that will, you know, that will really fill that sense of value and sense of self-worth. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And I also believe confidence really does start with that belief in yourself, because if you, if you don't believe in yourself, like you're not going to go out there and take action and what you want to do or you're, what you're passionate about. So it's really important to have that, that belief that you can do anything that you can, you have what it takes to go out there and do it. So thanks for sharing that. And, and what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? You know, it's so interesting, right? Because just sort of drawing from that same concept, you know, when when I became the global communications leader at Yahoo, you know, there was there was a huge gap that I had to fill because it's it's it was just one of the hardest jobs that anyone can ever take in a communications role because it was literally one crisis after another every single day. But eventually, because women are so much more capable than we all think, you know, I was able to really bridge that gap and, you know, and, and, you know, started to become the leader that I was meant to be. 
But, you know, despite the fact that I was, you know, doing really well at work, I was getting the recognition, you know, through promotions and and through, you know, just validation from my team and and obviously the CEO, Marissa Meyer. It didn't matter because I was sort of stuck in this obsessive questioning of my own self-worth. And I think, you know, it's 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 really important for us to really start believing in ourselves that we hold infinite power in our hands and that's how God created us. And it's really important for us to be able to tap into it ourselves, but it has to start from changing the, the way that we think about ourselves. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all face, you know, that worthiness, no matter, you know, how many awards you win, the recognition you get, you know, there's still that question, like, am I still worthy? Like, why am I getting all these these accolades, right? Or these these awards or being named, you know, certain titles, like we still in the back of our health, head feel like we're not enough. You know, we have to keep doing more and more and more, not realizing like we are more than enough. And, you know, things happen for a reason. Like we've worked hard for it. We've gone after it. It's just that we're not used to getting, you know, that recognition sometimes because as women, especially as Asian women, we've been taught to just be in the background, never make any noise, you know, never have attention to yourself. It's, so it's sometimes really hard for us to to accept some of these things. And, you know, what was that what was that point in your life when you realized you are more than worthy to go out there, especially making a, a recent life change? What was that aha moment? So I have to say that um, it was when I started to critique the self-critic in me. It, it was sort of a decision for me, right? Because I think, you know, we we end we we tend to get stuck in old thought patterns and it really required for me to start really listening to my inner intelligence. I think oftentimes again, you know, when 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 we are making decisions, you know, it is sometimes it is oftentimes actually it's not oftentimes every single time it is anchored on either love or fear. And so when I started to really, you know, do a little bit of self-inquiry and started to question, okay, am I making these decisions, you know, based on love or fear because there's there are only two things here, it's either love or fear, then I started to understand that there is an inner intelligence in me that spoke of truth and love. And that inner intelligence knows more about me as a person and my surroundings than, than my, my own consciousness can even, even fathom. And so, you know, I think that it, it was really when I started to really quiet down my thoughts, which is really where our inner critic stems from. And I started to really tune in to my heart and to my intuition that I start to see that transformation come to fruition in my external world. Thanks for sharing that. And I, it's great how you mentioned, you know, most of us, we fear a lot of stuff, right? And most of our decisions are based on fear, right? Because we're too afraid to go out there and do something different. We're too afraid if people make fun of us or talk about us or think we're crazy. And when we can learn to, like you mentioned, you know, make decisions based on love because, you know, you you know you're worthy to go out there and go after it or you know you have that capability to create something wonderful, then you just you just, you know, go at, go for it, right? It's not always easy and sometimes it's like the road less taken, but it's worth it on in the end, right? And because you've done that inner work, you know, it makes things a lot better. And because of that, what's your life been like now? Freedom. I mean, the freedom that I feel today, I, 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 it's in absolutely indescribable. I will say that, you know, I have a less propensity to, you know, to people please. I think oftentimes when we are short, when we feel we are short on love, we want to get to, to get that love from elsewhere. But in reality, that love already exists you know, within us. And when we are trying to source love from other people, it actually just means that we need to start loving ourselves. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, what, what we really need to be doing is doing more self care. Because if we cannot recognize, we cannot simply recognize other people's love, if we have not taken the time to actually learn to recognize that language for ourselves. So self care and self love is paramount. It has to start from there. And I think, you know, these days I'm really focused on making sure that I am whole first before I can serve other people. And it's been amazing. It's been such an amazing journey for me. If anyone there is even thinking about taking a break from, you know, from their careers just to, you know, just to rediscover who they are, I would highly, highly recommend it. It is one of the most transformational things I have ever done, and I do not regret it one bit. 
Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I think sometimes taking that break is essential, right? Especially when you're in a world where, you know, we've been programmed to like hustle, 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 hustle to the point where we get burnt out and figure out and wonder what are we doing with ourselves, right? Sometimes that break is essential. You know, I think it's it's where you can finally get to know yourself more, be, you know, be able to love your own company, right? Most of us, most of us feel awkward when we just go to a restaurant by ourselves. But you know, it's not a big deal. Like when you learn to love yourself and get to know yourself more, you know, it's essential to have these times to yourself, right? Whether it's to go out and eat by yourself or have a manicure, whatever it is, like it's, it's necessary. And sometimes we just have to be a little bit selfish so that we can become better and we can serve others better. And we can operate from a love that overflows versus, you know, needing and people pleasing and, you know, asking for approval. So I really love, you know, the tips that you mentioned. And, and, you know, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? You know, honestly, right now I'm very focused on, you know, on my next venture, which is really starting, you know, starting this new venture around leadership and culture coaching and advising. I've actually just landed my very first few clients. And so I'm very, very excited about that. But yeah, they can catch me on Facebook and, and, you know, obviously Instagram because everyone's on Instagram these days. And I just, you know, I want to encourage everyone, you know, there's one advice that I want to offer out there is, you know, you know, ladies start depositing in your brave bank. You know, and when I say depositing in your brave bank, I really mean, you know, you know, becoming brave doesn't just happen overnight. It, it starts with the small steps. And from there, you get braver and braver every single day. And, and when I say small steps, I mean, you know, raising your hand in a meeting, you know, eventually turns into you making a leap of faith and starting your own business. But there's lots of steps that needs to be taken before you can start your business. And that requires for you to, again, deposit in your brave bank. Thanks for sharing that. And I love what you mentioned about depositing into your brief bank because with self-confidence, it's actually the little actionable steps that give us that huge result. So, you know, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Anne, you can also head on over to the com and search for Anne's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Anne today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Anne. Thank you so much for having me, Sheena. And honestly, like this is one of the best things that we can do for society is to help empower others. So I'm really glad that you're doing this. Thank you. And, you know, it was really great having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to get your daily boost of confidence.